I really wanted to investigate the new way of looking at the story. It's really the story of Peter Pan through Wendy's eyes. I've always dreamed of flying. I had no intention of watching Peter Pan and Wendy because, let's face it, Disney's track record of adapting live-action remakes of our beloved animated movies have been, putting it mildly, pretty dire. And let's face it, no Peter Pan story can compete with the original animation, and of course, Hook. 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 But here I am, after a dull day at work and nothing on the TV, I find myself on Disney+. Plus. Peter Pan and Wendy is looking me right in the eye. Sure, why not? Anyway, the general form of the story is similar, but it eliminates not just the vital elements from the original, but also any evidence of thematic reasoning that would explain why this tale has persisted for so long. Peter Pan and Wendy incorporates elements from both the 1952 Disney animation masterpiece and the source book, while also introducing new modern ideas for a quote-unquote modern audience. Wendy Wendy is so battling with her boys in their bedroom when we first see her. No longer the maternal caring figure she once was, instead she is a conceited, unpleasant and complaining young lady. Wendy accuses John and then disparages her mother's hopes for her future when her mirror is smashed as a result of their shenanigans. Wendy and her brothers John and Michael are soon picked up by Peter Pan and Tinkerbell for a daring adventure in Neverland, where they are joined by the warrior Tiger Lily and the Lost Boys. But now, not all the Lost Boys are male since, as Wendy says, it does doesn't really matter. The issue is that it does matter, because Wendy's development as a character and the story revolve around these lost boys. Girls being added here proves that girls are just as stupid as boys. Equality, I guess. As Peter explains in the original narrative, girls are far too clever to fall out of their prams and end up lost. And given the focus of this movie, which is on female empowerment, this is an odd inclusion. Unfortunately, this change weakens Wendy's compelling character arc because she declines Peter Pan's offer to read the children bedtime stories in favour of singing them a lullaby. There isn't much indication of Wendy's maternal instincts taking over and becoming the Lost Boy's mother figure, illustrating that being a loving, caring carer can be just as successful, if not more so, than raw power and swash buckling sword fighting. However, this is clearly overlooked in favour of Wendy fending off pirates and saving the day twice, including Peter Pan. The movie needs to make it clear that Wendy is a strong female character. I honestly think that strong female character has lost all meaning, since Hollywood clearly has no idea what these words mean anymore. Originally, strong female characters are those that take charge in a situation and lead the way. They don't need to be the most beautiful or the strongest, but they do need to be respected, admired and loved by the audience. However, the strong female character has been reduced to being better than everyone at everything, especially men, and having no flaws. Everything they desire, they obtain, and everyone they fight, regardless of training, they defeat. Are people meant to look up at these characters? and see themselves in them because I find it difficult to think that anyone does. Look, I believe that we need more representation of women and people of colour on the big screen, but I completely disagree with the notion that we must see ourselves on the big screen in order to be invested in the movie. As a white male, I can watch Lord of the Rings with a mostly white cast and be completely engaged, and I can also watch Moonlight with an all-black cast and be completely enthralled. But how is this even possible? Well, it's not according to some on Twitter. However, it is because both films spend time establishing characters with whom you can can identify, regardless of race or gender. I don't care what colour or sex the person on screen is if the tale is well written and the characters are defined. To return to my original argument about strong female characters, I want female characters with weaknesses, desires and needs, not someone who lacks all basic human emotion but can kick everyone's butt. I want strong female characters like Ellen Ripley in Alien, Clarence Starling in The Silence of the Lambs, Sarah Connor in Terminator and Terminator Judgment Day, Christine McPherson in Lady Bird, Ellie Woods in Legally Blonde, Far Mulan from Mulan, the 1988 animated version, because the live action remake of course turns her into a modern strong female character. All of these female characters are strong but not in their physical sense, some are, but the point is that they all have to struggle to achieve their aims and ambitions via compassion, compromise, smart, wit and a slew of other genuine human traits. Now that's a strong female character. Anyway, the story's lack of inherent enchantment is the problem with this retelling and maybe the adjustments 
changes made to Wendy's personality wouldn't be so detrimental if Wendy had more likeable personality. Though she isn't, she actually punches Peter Pan in the nose while berating him for showing off at one point. Wendy and the others make subtle jabs at Peter's incompetence throughout the film, and Wendy even declares at the conclusion that the magic belongs to no boy. Unfortunately, Michael and John get lost in the mix and don't really contribute much to the plot. Given that this is a reinvention, it's unfortunate that they don't receive more attention than the final few scenes on board Hook's ship. Tiger Lily is also there, but her role in the narrative is more of a convenient deus ex machina device than a completely developed character. But what about Peter Pan himself? Well, they make some odd story choices to try and distinguish itself from their classic story, but it just comes across as a cheap knockoff. This story of Peter Pan and Wendy essentially supports the notion that Peter Pan is a villain. No one is allowed to discuss the fact that Captain Hook used to go by the name James and was actually Peter's best friend. Similarly, Pan appears to be unconcerned with the fact that he is at war with his one-time closest comrade and is frequently actively attempting to maim or kill him. This only changes towards the end of the film, despite the fact that their quarrel seemed to have sprung entirely from Peter victim James for confessing he missed his mother. Since this dispute ends with the leader of the Lost Boys wanting to make amends with his old comrade, Peter is not presented as being beyond redemption. Pan is much more morally dubious because of the choice to make Peter's mistreatment the origin narrative of Hook. Over the course of the film, Hook's early claim that all my bad form I learned from you looks more and more accurate, elevating Peter's atonement to the centre of the story. There are many opportunities for an updated retelling of the Peter Pan and Wendy tale that delves deeper into the feminist ideas regarding Wendy's role in the narrative. Even if it is a little outdated, the system is already in place. In contrast to Peter's inconsistent father status, Wendy's role as the mother of the Lost Boys only makes sense if the Lost Boys are men and Wendy is the only girl among them. Tinkerbell doesn't really count because she's a fairy and Tiger Lily isn't a member of their group. As I previously stated, diversity and inclusion isn't a bad thing, but you can't just shove these elements into a movie and expect a pat on the back for it. However, the unwitting supporters, media influencers and reviewers, producers and directors who back these repetitive, lifeless, diversity and inclusion programs, I'm hoping that the general public sees through the curtain and realises that true inclusion and diversity necessitate more than racial and gender reversals. So, rather than simply recycling old stories with a brown Peter Pan instead of a white Peter Pan and cocky trailers boasting our own achievements, but you're not old boys. So? We should demand new and varied stories, and such stories will only be better if we don't watch these cheap knockoffs. But I suppose that's what these movies have become, a dull Wednesday night pity watch. Despite my negative ramble, there are some noteworthy aspects of this story, so it's not all bad. Both Hook and Shmi are terrific and exude the personality that the originals are known for. There are also a few funny gags that are placed just at the right times. TikTok the crocodile, at least in his mischievous guise, is a conspicuously absent from this movie, which is a shame because it may have benefited from having more of him, and the ending can be said to end on a brighter note than the original. While the character in the original Disney Peter Pan has many adventures ahead of him, his decision to return to Neverland may appear tragic because it means he will never spend the rest of his days in limbo. When Peter decides to leave Neverland and Captain Hook appears to be more concerned with him confronting his past in order to construct a new future, the plot of Peter Pan and Wendy is far more concerned with Peter recognising that growing up isn't always a bad thing. The Peter Pan and Wendy finale proved to be a logically happy conclusion to each individual story, with the concluding sense strongly implying that Peter Pan and Captain Hook reconnected. But ultimately, Peter Pan and Wendy is just a disaster piece of a movie. The best elements of the original have been taken and changed and distorted in the worst way possible in this week. Unimaginative reworking. This could very well be the worst Peter Pan adaptation or story ever. Well, that's enough rambling for one day.